Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Uh, we have been covering some of the non-communicable diseases from community medicine point of view or public health point of view and we have already studied some of the diseases. Uh, today we will be discussing uh, about a condition which is very important uh, from non-communicable uh, diseases point of view and it is obesity. So let's start. So obesity in short is excess body fat uh, and if you have to define it specifically then you will say that obesity is an abnormal growth of the adipose tissue which may be due to an enlargement of fat cell size hence called hypertrophic obesity or it may be due to an increase in fat cell number which is called hyperplastic obesity or a combination of both. Usually it is a combination of both of these types. Uh, there are certain other conditions that may give rise to excess weight, uh, for example an abnormal muscle development uh, or fluid retention as seen in edema. Uh, these uh, conditions are not labeled as obesity. The distribution of fat uh, in obese people may differ uh, there are many varieties of obesity or many types of obesity and uh, there may be distribution of uh, fat in the body in the central abdominal region that will be called as android obesity or central obesity or it is also called uh, uh, abdominal uh, obesity then there is a gynoid type of obesity in which the fat collects in the thigh and buttocks area. Uh, then there is another variety which is called generalized obesity in which the fat accumulation is uh, distributed uh, generally over all the body uh, in whole of the body. So there are uh, many uh, varieties of obesity when it comes to distribution of fat in the body. Uh, important here is uh, to know that uh, the distribution of fat in obese people uh, is responsible for uh, different types of risk or different levels of risk associated with uh, some of the other diseases. So uh, the risk associated, the risk of uh, say hypertension associated with generalized obesity or musculoskeletal obesity may be less than the risk of hypertension associated with central obesity. Obesity may be uh, one of the most prevalent manifestations of uh, malnutrition the world over. Uh, it is uh, present in children as well as adults. It is present in developed countries as well as developing countries. Uh, for developed countries, the uh, prevalence of obesity can be linked with the decreasing levels of physical activity and sedentary lifestyle. Uh, while many other factors are uh, responsible for obesity in developing and underdeveloped countries. Uh, it is very difficult to assess the prevalence of obesity in the world and in, in many uh, different countries and that is mainly due to the very different uh, definitions of obesity that was used uh, worldwide. We have already uh, studied in uh, many cardiovascular diseases that uh, one of the risk factors that is responsible for development of those uh, cardiovascular diseases is obesity uh, in combination with other factors. Obesity is one of the leading factors of cardiovascular diseases. So it is one of the leading uh, risks of global death and its prevalence is on the high and worldwide it is believed that the obesity prevalence has doubled since uh, 1980. It was uh, once considered a high income country problem. Uh, it was considered that obesity is only seen in the developed countries, affluent countries, uh, but it is now rising in developing uh, and low income countries as well, most uh, specifically in urban settings. Childhood obesity uh, is associated with a higher chance of obesity in the adulthood as well and then also with premature death and disability in adulthood. Uh, future risk of increased breathing difficulties, increased risk of fractures, hypertension are also associated with childhood obesity.
let us look at some of the epidemiological determinants uh, which are uh, related to obesity first of all there is age uh, obesity can occur at any age and it generally increases with age infants uh, which had excessive weight uh, they had an increased risk of uh, increased in, uh, incidence of obesity in later life as well second uh, factor that is uh, linked to obesity is a sex women generally have higher rate of obesity than men all the men have higher rates of being overweight in the famous uh, from ingham study that we discussed uh, when we studied the cardiovascular diseases in that study men were found to uh, gain most weight between the ages of 29 and 35 year while uh, women gained most weight between 45 and 49 years of age an age is usually uh, related with the menopause then there are genetic factors uh, there, uh, there is a genetic component in the etiology of obesity physical inactivity is uh, linked with the obesity and the this this factor uh, of uh, lack of activity uh, associated with obesity this has been well documented and substantiated socioeconomic status so we know that there is a clear inverse uh, relationship between socioeconomic status and obesity uh, in some affluent countries however obesity has been found to be more prevalent in the lower socioeconomic groups uh, there uh, it is uh, the other way around Further, we go into epidemiological determinants. We see that eating habits are associated with obesity. Uh, snacks in between meals, eating of fast foods, consumerism of today, these are all associated with obesity. There are certain psychological factors which result in overeating and hence obesity. For example, symptoms of uh, depression, anxiety, frustration, loneliness, etc. There is a familial tendency towards obesity seen as well and it frequently runs in families. Uh, endocrine factors are responsible for obesity as well. In occasional cases, Cushing syndrome, growth hormone deficiency happens and, the, uh, and, the, and they can lead to obesity. The alcohol consumption is also associated with increased adiposity and uh, obesity uh, among men only um, alcohol consumption in women is not associated with obesity education is also a factor in most affluent societies there is an inverse relationship between educational level and prevalence of overweight meaning that higher the level of education the there is less prevalence of uh, obesity smoking has been uh, postulated as one of the factors for uh, lack of obesity but the evidence uh, is not substantiated yet the jury is still out there ethnicity some of the ethnic groups when they go, uh, go overseas in the affluent countries they tend to be uh, overweight and obese uh, the factors are responsible for that uh, weight gain and uh, obesity uh, have been suggested to be better living conditions then there are certain drugs, for example, corticosteroids, contraceptives, insulin, beta-adrenergic beta blockers, and these can all promote weight gain and obesity. As we have uh, said earlier that uh, obesity can be of various types depending upon the distribution of uh, fat in the body, in, in various areas of the body and uh, there is a very uh, good uh, evidence available that abdominal obesity or central obesity or central accumulation of fat uh, alongside the viscera uh, surrounding the viscera is an important uh, risk factor for development of many of other non-communicable diseases for example insulin resistance can happen in people with central obesity uh, and people who have uh, central accumulation of fat and metabolic syndrome can happen and you know that uh, insulin resistance and metabolic syndrome they, these can uh, give rise to many of the other 
complications and non communicable diseases for example cardiovascular diseases so uh, central obesity is a major risk factor and uh, central obesity is uh, uh, gives a greater risk uh, for the all these diseases compared to generalized obesity also you have to know that central obesity is seen more in south asians in pakistanis and indians the tendency to have central obesity as compared to musculoskeletal obesity is more so how will you assess obesity how can you say if somebody is obese or not there are many definitions and, and there are many uh, ways and means to assess somebody's uh, status of adipose tissue in his or her body and uh, some of these methods are uh, on your screen these methods that you are seeing on the screen uh, they take into account weight and height or either weight or height or both of them so the most important among these is the body mass index which takes into account the weight in kilograms and height and weight is uh, divided by height uh, square uh, of height in meters and the second one is ponderal index, index uh, which uh, takes into account height and cube root of uh, body weight it is a ratio of 2 then there is broca index which is height in centimeters minus 100 uh, another method is lorenz formula which takes uh, height minus 100 minus height so minus 150 divided by 2 for women or 4 if the person is a man then there is corpulence index which is a ratio between actual weight and desirable weight and ideally this should not exceed 1.2 so these are some of the methods for assessment of obesity which take into account the height and weight or both of these uh, indicators as said earlier uh, bmi is one of the most important and most widely used most commonly used methods for assessment of obesity so here we take a look at uh, how a uh, bmi can be used to classify uh, people into various categories of obesity or overweight so we know that uh, bmi is a ratio between weight and height where weight is taken in kilograms and height in meters and it is squared in that ratio so the result of this ratio if it is less than 18.5 that is bmi is less than 18.5 then the person is labeled as underweight and the risk of comorbidities are low but it is still there if the bmi is in the range of 18.5 to 25 24.9 then it is normal range if it is more uh, if it is 25 to 29.9 then the person is labeled as overweight or pre obese then if the bmi is equal to or more than 30 the person is labeled as obese and then there are further three classes of obesity and you can see the different bmi values and ranges uh, that denote these different classes of obesity class 1 2 or 3 so these are the uh, cut off values for bmi to classify people into different categories of uh, weight or overweight and obesity remember these are used uh, throughout the world same cut off values but uh, these were initially developed for the uh, caucasians uh, the white people Uh, we know that uh, we are different physically uh, from the uh, white people so there are revised recommended cut off values for south asians that is us uh, indians pakistanis and bangladeshis and others so the recommended cut off values uh, bmi cut off values for south asians are given in the second table there you can see the underweight is uh, less than 18.5 it is the same as in the upper table but the normal range uh, the uh, the range for normal uh, weight is revised here and the upper cut off value is revised to 22.9 again overweight is uh, between 23 to 24.9 bmi 
obese uh, class 1 is 25 to 29.3 and obese class 2 is more than 30 you remember here that uh, obese one starts at 25 the cutoff value has been brought down for south asia these are the values the values in the second table that you have to use if you are assessing somebody in our country for uh, obesity through bmi method Another uh, method that is used for assessment of obesity is skin fold thickness. It is a very crude method. Uh, we know that a large uh, proportion of total body fat is located just under the skin, but this may not be true in every individual. Uh, there may be accumulation of uh, fat in the visceral central abdominal region, and there may not be uh, excessive accumulation under the skin only. But since it is most accessible, the skin, uh, hence this method is used. In this, we use a vernier calipers. Those calipers are used to measure the skin fold thickness. It is rapid and uh, non-invasive. The sites that are used for this uh, measurement of skin fold thickness are mid triceps, biceps, subscapular, and suprailiac regions. Uh, the sum of uh, measurements uh, should be less than 40 millimeters in boys and 50 millimeters in girls. Uh, as you can imagine, this uh, is not a very uh, precise method and a very crude method. Standards for a subcutaneous fat do not exist to which we can compare after measuring somebody's skin fold thickness further. In extreme obesity, measures are almost impossible. And, and another drawback is uh, there is poor repeatability. Uh, one person uh, measures uh, something else, another one will uh, have a totally different measurement, etc. These are the disadvantages of skin fold thickness. Another, met uh, another method for assessment of obesity is waist circumference and waist hip ratio. Uh, this method is much more relevant in our part of the world, in Pakistan and in uh, South Asia. The assessment of obesity by waist circumference and waist hip ratio is more important. Why is that? Because we know that in our part of the world, the uh, obesity tends to be of central type or uh, visceral type. Uh, here, the accumulation of fat is in the central abdominal region. So this method of waist circumference and waist hip ratio measurement is more appropriate in our settings than uh, say BMI or these two methods should be used in combination. So waist circumference is measured at the midpoint between the lower border of the rib cage and the iliac crest. That is where you measure the waist circumference. It is convenient and simple and it is unrelated to height but it correlates closely with BMI. Waist hip ratio uh, is another uh, measure and it is an uh, approximate index of intra abdominal fat mass and total body fat. Changes in waist circumference reflect changes in risk factors for cardiovascular disease and other forms of chronic disease. As we have said earlier, central obesity is greatly linked to cardiovascular diseases. So, any change in waist circumference uh, towards the increasing side will denote that the risk for cardiovascular disease has another has also increased over the past 10 years or so it has become uh, accepted that a high waist hip ratio for example greater than 1 in men and greater than 1 uh, greater than 0.85 in women indicates abdominal fat accumulation then there are some other methods used for assessment of obesity as well and these may include assessment of uh, total body water of total body potassium and of uh, body density there are other imaging techniques available uh, to assess the fat cells in the body as well uh, for example contrast uh, ct scans etc but these are all complicated methods and cannot be used routinely in the clinical setting what are the hazards of obesity well it increases both morbidity and mortality uh, when we talk about increased morbidity in respect to uh, obesity 
we are talking about increased chances of hypertension and diabetes, gallbladder disease, coronary artery disease, and certain types of cancer. And not only these, uh, there are other uh, diseases which may not be fatal, but there are complications other than these I mentioned before. And these may include varicose veins, abdominal hernia, osteoarthritis of the knees, hips and lumbar spine, flat feet and psychological stresses, etc. Uh, when we talk about increased mortality, uh, we know that uh, in the Framingham Heart Study, which we have talked about previously in relation to the cardiovascular diseases, uh, we saw that in study, in that study, a dramatic increase in sudden death among men, more than 20% overweight, as compared to those who were normal uh, weight, who had normal weight. This increased mortality is mainly by the increased incidence of hypertension and coronary heart disease which are linked to obesity so in in short the bottom line is that obesity lowers life expectancy so what can we do for the prevention and control of obesity uh, the first thing to focus is that the prevention of obesity should begin uh, should begin in early childhood it is harder to treat in adults than it is in children so the prevention and control should be aimed at uh, childhood so how can we achieve that uh, we can achieve that by dietary changes of course we know that the uh, re by reducing the readily available energy sources for example carbohydrates and fats in the in in our nutrition can result in decreased chances or incidence of obesity uh, we know that increasing fiber intake can result in uh, decreased chances of obesity also the dietary changes should also uh, focus on dietary habits then the second part is increased physical activity. We know that uh, increased physical activity has a direct uh, inverse link with the obesity. So increased physical activity can be one of the measures that can be adopted uh, that can be adopted to uh, for the prevention and control of obesity. And a combination of both is usually used. Um, they can be used in isolation as well, but a combination is more useful. There are certain other methods available as well for example there are uh, there has been uh, ongoing research for many years on certain appetite suppressing drugs uh, then there are uh, certain surgical procedures for example gastric bypass or gastroplasty jaw wiring etc but these uh, methods uh, have not uh, proved to be as successful or as effective as the dietary changes and increased physical activity has. So these are some of the methods that can be used for the prevention and control of obesity. Thank you very much. Have a nice day.